Well, hi there. Hey. <laughs> uh, this is Dodge and Fusky. Uh, we're going to be doing a brief tutorial today. This is the first one. There's been obviously quite a bit of feedback. Two suggestions online of doing some video tutorials, so we thought we'd give it a go. Uh, I'm going to start off today with doing drums. Dodge's forte. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, a king drummer on the computer anyway. King drummer. Uh, <coughs> yeah. So basically, the tune we're going to be going through, we're going to be doing a few of these videos. We'll stick one up today and see what your feedback's like, and maybe get some others up there pretty much straight away. Uh, but we're going to be basing them to begin with anyway around a track called Gwetta Step, uh, which you're probably all Much to with. my dismay. Yeah, yeah, it's a lovely original tune. I sung all the vocals myself. Uh, okay, so the, basic, the first thing we're going to be doing is taking a look at how we sort of build all the drums together. Uh, first thing to start off with, really, I guess, is sample choice. Because mm. um, this, this is... Pretty important. Yeah, I mean, this is for years how I, I made such terrible music is, well, some may argue continue to. Uh, it's from choosing the wrong kind of samples. Um, I remember, like, when I first started making tunes, I started making trance and I was using, like. Acoustic drums. Yeah. In reason. Exactly, yeah. yeah Jazz exactly. acoustic drums. <laughs> I'm wondering why it sounded shit. Uh, so basically, the most important thing is not EQing the shit out of something or, like, really compressing it and all this, like, really mega high tech stuff. It's just getting the right sample in the first place. Mm. And there's really? a lot of good sample packs available now. Yeah. <coughs> Vengeance. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Google Vengeance sample packs. Basically, I think pretty much all the dubstep's made up from them. I know people are going to hate me for saying that, but it is true, and they are sick. And there's a hell of a lot of them, and if you sift through them, you will find some very nice, punchy drums in there. Exactly, exactly. I'll anyway, see so straight to the point with Dodge and Fusky, none of, none of this kind of like... Mm, mm, mm. So we'll start off with, um, with the kick drum. Okay, so what I've got here, I'm going to... Um, I hope you can see this, we're going to be layering up the video so you can see from the computer. I've got a, a kick drum, which I haven't really done anything to. Just up a bit. Which I haven't really done anything to. I've shortened it a little bit. A, a good thing with dubstep is to have a nice little bit of punch, but not too much tail in the sub. Otherwise, it kind of messes with like your your, your bass lines and stuff like that. You want to have a, a relatively short sample. Yeah, but not so short that it's like clicky, you know, sort of thing. And then what I've done then. Um, here is I've just added in um, a bit of EQ. Now that's what I tend to do. This is a bit of an extreme one. It must have been to make it fit in this tune. But I, what I tend to do is boost about a hundred hertz. Hundred hertz is a really good place to boost a kick drum. It makes it punch. Uh, take out anything excessive below then, so it's not messing with your sub. And I tend to boost the top end quite a bit as well to get a nice click. Yeah, to get that presence. A lot of kicks often lack that kind of top end crunch and. That's what, aside from the sub, you get that click that, well, particularly on a big sound system, that cuts through really nicely. Yeah, exactly. I mean, some people like their kicks with high hats. So, I mean, I, I'm pretty lazy to be honest. I tend to only use one kick drum sample, by the way. Or well, possibly two. Some, some, depends, some, sometimes yeah. two. Me personally, this is this is another thing we want to explain is that even between us, there's quite a few different ways of doing yeah, stuff. We have our discrepancies with what I choose to do and what Dodge chooses to do. Yeah, like. yeah, we well, definitely do. Um, so, me personally, I just use one kick drum and try and eke it as best as I can. So, when it comes out, like, uh, you can hear a lot more clicky top end. Um, sorry, the audio might be a bit shit from this, by the way, uh, but you should be able to get the idea from kind of watching anyway. Okay, and then the next thing uh, after the kick, I tend to do to a snare. Uh, on this track, what I've done here is I've, I've, I've in fact got three sort of things layered up here. So, um, okay, so I've got a kind of punchy snare, which sounds a bit crap on its own, but it's got lo loads of weight to it. What I've done here, again with the EQ, is I've boosted about 200 hertz in here. Now, 200, 200 hertz seems to be the kind of key for getting smack out of your snare, so it kind of goes like 100, 200 for your kick to your snare. Yeah. Like you. Snares can, obviously, there are particular frequencies within any snare sample that are going to be stronger than others and some particularly with vengeance in particular there's um some of very low like the punch of them can be between 100 and 200 and mm. often for, in tunes that's you know that's where some of your sub sitting and that can muddy the mix so you know you could go down the, the route of pitching drum samples to the keys of tracks but i mean not everyone does that we don't often do that all the time yeah but um yeah, it's just finding that sweet spot aspect, essentially in the in the low. Yeah, low definitely. And a real real sample. key with with um with snares, uh, I notice people t tend to do a lot is uh, making sure that there's not too much sort of there's not too much sustain, not too much reverb on your low end stuff. So make your low end punchy stuff, not too much in the sub region. Uh, you know, two hundred hundreds is a 
as Chris was saying. Uh, but also making sure there's no reverb and like Phew, on your low end because it just tends to sound flabby. Like, I have quite a short, if you listen to this, it's really short, the low end, but then when you've got the top ending stuff, I tend to have a much longer sample, sometimes some reverb. So, for example, I've got this clappy thing, which is a lot longer. Anyway, I've, and I've layered that with like another kind of clappy thing, which you get all together. Yeah. So it's got loaded weight. I'll play that with the kick and snare, so you can just kind of hear with the kick and the snare together. There's quite a bit of kind of flow to it already, literally just with the kick and snare. And then um, there's, there's different ways to start building it up. I mean, these days I tend to use like a hi hat, just going tss, 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 on the top. And what I've done here actually is I've used like a brake sleeve that's been chopped up. So rather than going, it goes. So it's just literally been the first bit's kind of been repeated. If you can see here, um, there's, there's kind of like the beginning of the loop here, and then the loop begins again here. So it kind of sounds, ends up. Um, let me just solo that loop. So it sounds like. So you're essentially moving the snare from two and four just to three every yeah. bar. I mean, this, there's lots. I mean, to be honest, I barely do this anymore. But yeah. this, this quite is quite one way. Yeah, yeah, way, yeah. Isn't it? I tend to just use a hi hat, but again, again, just that loop. And the kicks and snares. So. It's already got sounds that, like that syncopation in there already. Like, yeah, um, yeah. Very few elements essentially. Yeah, syncopation like the whole shuffly thing is another thing worth talking about. Um, depending on how your sequencer works, I mean, I don't know. We use Cubase. Um, it's probably different with every sequencer. But getting rather than just being straight sixteenth quantization, get a bit of shuffle in there. It kind of makes it makes mm. it kind of flow a bit better. And all you and even within a track, varying um, if it's like with Cubase, you can set percentages of shuffle um, so say I've got some presets of on 16th uh, notes of shuffles varying between 10% right the way through to 95% 100% and every like at 5% increments and yeah um, you can choose like <coughs> suited to the track and suited to the vibe you're going for obviously at 100% it's going to be really jumpy and give it a much more bouncy feel yeah, yeah. and straight like zero uh, just at straight 16 is going to be you know smacky and rolling kind of thing so, yeah there's no set rule it's yeah. going to go, go with the vibe going with your feel of the track yeah. basically. Um, right, basically the next thing that I think is really important we tend to do a lot is anything that is not like a kick or a snare that's not really weighty because there's a lot of space in dubstep we tend to high pass quite aggressively so for example on this brake sleep here I mean, I've got a high pass filter going here at like one kilohertz, but you could do that on an EQ. Um, I mean, I've probably done it on an EQ on this one. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you can see on, on the ride here, I've literally taken anything out below sort of one or two kilohertz. So you've literally got this kind of like, if you imagine kind of a scale, right? down the bottom, you've got your kick, then you've got your snare, and then you've got a nice big gap, and that's kind of where like, all your bass lines and normal noise are going to be, and then you've got a nice crispy top end. So basically between your, between your snare and your hats, that, that's where the rest of the tune kind of sits a little bit. And then obviously you've got sub down at the bottom. Um, so I'll, basically I'll, I'll show you now, with, there's like another ride, I think I've got crash symbol. I mean these have all been really heavily high passed. So uh, putting all them in together here, I'll, I'll play you back the loop as it is. Sort of. So. And there's a couple of bits in there, there's like a bit of delay or something, but I mean yeah. really... These are creative choices that are kind of yeah. made as the, depending on the individual track, so you know if, if it does feel like that delay choice there would probably be because it it would fill a little bit of a gap within the rhythm. Yeah, perhaps. exactly, so, I, mean, I could have done the same thing by putting in an extra couple of ticky things, but it just... Yeah. Yeah. But one thing that's really important I think at this point, and this is something that used to confuse me and I used to spend way too much time thinking about when I was first making tunes, is this whole thing, I have not used a single compressor, like not one. Now, partially that has got to do with because these are things like Venture samples, and they will already be compressed to a certain extent. I mean, obviously, if you're recording a live drum kit, you'd be mental not to use some kind of compression. But this is the thing that I always used to get hung up with, and I was used to like, you know, try and compress everything and then group it together. And you know, I'd read somewhere on like the Dogs on Acid forum or something like that about how some experts there seem to think that that's what you had to do. But uh, you know, the point, the point being, was really. Most of this down to here is picking the right samples that sit together and then EQing them so they sit together and that's literally it. There's basically nothing being used there other than EQs pretty much. Yeah. Um, not that there's a bit of one of yeah. those. Yeah. And, uh, you might have spotted earlier there was like a side chain trigger, but that's got nothing to do with the drums, that's just we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that another time. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's just the kick drum being a trigger for the side chain for the bass lines. Yeah. No, we will get to that. that. We will get to that. Yeah, um, but on that point again, like this is where we can differ sometimes in our production techniques. Um, 
it does it's fully track dependent and i mean we have a, a particular niche of genre in this the more jump up style so we're up for that upfront crispy clear kind of drum sounds yeah very heavily um, kicks and stuff because um, it's not ambient at all. but i it, again it it depends on the elements in the track it depends on so many things but say for example i have used and do sometimes still use um drum busting whereby i would stick all of the drums into an individual group and from that group you can use then you can maybe limit it ever so slightly if you just want to get that little bit tiny bit of a squash on it yeah um, not necessarily the compressor, maybe with a nice limiter, just like just add a bit of warmth and crunch to it if the drums need to be brought forward slightly in the mix. Or um, another good technique is um, parallel compression, whereby you um, set up an auxiliary send of a compressor and on pretty much a really heavy compression setting, and then send um, from your drum group channel just a bit of a feed in and at a very low level. It's not so you can hear it like um, obviously, but again that can add. A bit of harmonic content to your drums just to lift them a little yeah. bit if they're sounding a little bit lifeless but again this is all yeah the thing to remember yeah, is this. if that all went over your head don't worry because some of that went over my head and um you know it doesn't matter you know there's different ways of doing this i mean the important thing to remember is that your mix down sounds tight and everything's got its place and everything's punchy and there's enough space for everything and i find what i tend to do is build all my drums right at the beginning get it all, all in there right so i can mix some stuff around it and i don't end up with this nightmare kind of mix down issue at the end um i mean everyone has their own approach i just kind of like to know what I've got to work with, if you see what I mean. If you get your drums right first, then mm. build around it. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I mean, that's most things covered really, isn't it? Um, give us your feedback. This, this is going to be the first one that we've done. We're going to be trying to do quite a few of these. So if there's any particular topics you want us to talk about, um, let us know, send us some feedback. Yeah, Go on Facebook. Some comments. Go on yeah, Facebook. Twitter, yeah. Facebook. We do read everything, like, quite obsessively, actually. Yeah. So, you know, we'll probably give you an answer in a day if, if, if it's relevant and stuff. Um, and yeah, subscribe to the channel. Um, I don't know where it'll be. We're gonna put Just like put some kind of yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm imagining there. there, there, there. I'm imagining there. there's gonna be a button right there. there. Button there. <laughs> uh, click subscribe. Um, um, we're gonna try and get at least one of these up a week. Um, if we get a load of feedback from this, we'll try and get another one up this weekend. Who knows? But yeah, cheers. Bye bye.